this part of our project we're going to do model building but before going into that let's first have a short look at the VIF if, if you still remember in our past lesson so that's actually a part of the assumption of no multicollinearity we have these VIF values and we have these policy type and policy which have very high VIF values they must be deleted from the features that we're going to use for our model building let's have this one first we are going to drop the customer lifetime value and then the policy type and the policy so maybe you would want to ask me why do we need to drop this customer lifetime value variable in our data set the reason for that is that is our y which is our target variable and if you could see we use here np that log so we have transformed the values into log so the main reason for that is in our prior statistical understanding of our data we've seen and we have discovered that the distribution between and among our features are not normally distributed so with that we would like to transform that into at least or very similar to normal distribution so that's why we use here np.log but in our case we have transformed just the value of the y into a log form then we have split the data into the train test and the test set so we have here the 30 and 70 percent division so you can actually do that also by using 80 20 it depends upon you and you can actually do the the trial and error for that but in my case in this project i just used the 30 and prior to this i have also tested this one using the 20 80 percent rule and the 30 percent rule and 70 percent rule are giving me the better performance so now let's execute this one okay it's now executed and we may as well would like to see the values of our x train the y train the x test and the y set or y test so let's execute this one okay so we have these values for our x train we have 5669 and we have 19 features and we have 5669 also for the y train and of course we don't have the number of variables here because it's only one and that is our customer lifetime value and for our x test and y test we have 2430 okay so what would be the first algorithm and model that we are going to test let's have this one we are going to test first the ridge and the lasso regression so from the scale learn that linear we have imported the ridge and the lasso and also for the metrics of evaluation we use here the mean squared error and the r2 score and the mean absolute error or this one the r2 score is the r squared so let's first have the ridge regression so let's execute this one oops it's not defined because we have not yet executed this one okay and now our ridge regression performances as far as the rmse and the r squared are concerned so we have our MSE is 0.57. Let's round it off to 5.8. And the R squared is 24. Surrounding it off from 23.9 or 23.9. So that means for the R squared, we have 24% of the variance being explained with the model. So it's not really that good performance. And we have the R MSE, which is really very much big. So let's see the R to score and the... Yeah, the R2 score, the R squared score for both the train set and the test set for the ridge regression model. Let's execute this one. Okay, so the performance is actually good. We could not see that much bias and variance in our data set for both the train and the test sets. So in short, there is no overfitting. Now let's try to have the lasso regression. And let's try to compare later which one is showing better performance. Is it the ridge or the lasso regression? So let's execute this one. We have 5.9 and um, 0.19. So 0.59 for the RMSE. So this one is actually bigger than RMSE. And 0.19 is smaller than R squared. 
So that means this lasso regression only explains 19% of the variance of the data. So as far as this performance is, is concerned, lasso is giving us a better result. I mean, it's the regression, reads regression, that gives us the better result. But let's try to look at both the train test and the test set for the lasso regression. Let's execute this one. So it's 0.197. So there is actually no overfitting and underfitting. But in comparison to the ridge regression, the ridge regression is giving us a better result. Let's go to a decision tree. Oh, anyway, let's go first to this one. Um, the random state here. You can actually choose um, 2, 4, 50, or 42, whatever you want for you to be able to identify which random state gives you the proper or the more convincing result for the different metrics of evaluation. And you can see that as far as I have um, tried, tested, random state 1 shows a better result. So let's go to decision tree. Let's execute this one and just like your lasso regression yeah it, it, the, yeah the lasso regression we also have chosen the random state equal to one so let's execute this one let's see the results so we have 0.27 for the rmse for the my we have um 11 point 11 and the r squared we have 0.82 so the result is actually very much convincing and is it um, way too high in comparison to the results of both the ridge regression and the lasso regression so as you could see in this case the rmse is down to only 0.27 in comparison to the ridge regression which is 0.57 which is very high and for the lasso it is 0.59 which is also higher than the ridge regression so it's not actually a good model so in this case we only have Point, um, point 0.27 and the MAI is also lower and the R squared is higher at 82.64 or let's have 83% so which means the decision tree explains 82.65% of the variance of our data set so let's execute this one let's see the R squared score for both the train and the test set it's good we have here the one perfect and we have the R squared for the test set, we have 0.82. So as far as this one is concerned, we could say that there is actually a or an overfitting for the X twin and the Y twin. So because of the very big variance between one and 0.82. So let's try to see how it performs using the random forest regressor. So let's first um, import random forest regressor from a skill learn ensemble because again random forest is an ensemble method so let's execute this and now let's try to fit our model or our data into the model which is the random forest model and let's see the performance okay so it may take some time because you know the ensemble tree is actually um taking more time and having a lot of compute computation in comparison to the former algorithms and models that we have already used. So RMSE, in comparison to the decision tree, it has 0.27, and in this case, we only have 0.19. So the RMSE, much, much lower in comparison to the ridge and the lasso regressions, and of course, to the decision tree. The MAI, it's now very, very low in comparison to the MAI of uh, decision tree regressor so we only have 0 0.0919 something and the r squared it's higher it's 0 0.9125 so we can just convert that to percentage which is 91.26 so 91.26 percent of our data is being explained by the model which is the random forest so let's see the r squared for both the x train and the um, X test, the Y train and the Y test. Let's see if there's overfitting and underfitting. Okay. So this one is really good. Uh, we have, we could see a better performance. The R squared for the twin is 0 0.98 and the R squared for the test set is 0 0.91. There's somewhat a uh, higher margin. Let's try to change this one into two and let's see what the results would be. 
Okay, so let's just wait for a few minutes. Okay, now we have in there. Let's see. There's, okay. Actually, well, it's still the same. So in things like this, um, what we will do is that we can possibly revisit the features that we have used. What I will do now is that um, we're going to take away the income. Let's see what would be the result. So apart from this, let's have the income. Okay. And now what we will do is that we're going to rerun this notebook. So let's first restart and run all. And this may take for a few minutes. So you can just have some coffee and then just come back after a few minutes, maybe five minutes. Okay, so let's go back to this one. After dropping income, and we have seen that we have these results. Okay, so now we will just change the random state to, to one. Let's see what's going to happen, right? And also this one, let's try to do this. Mm -hmm. So this one is now better. So from 91.911 to 0.913. So we have tested, we have trained and tested three algorithms and models. So we have the region lasso. Actually four if, if we're going to break region lasso into, uh, into two. So we also have um, the decision tree. And then we also have the random forest. And we have tested and evaluated their performances, respective performances using uh, RMSE and the R squared and four random forest and decision tree regressor. We have added the my, and also we have identified whether or not there's overfitting and underfitting in the models. So we have now the results of which which one we're going to use for our final modeling and for our parameter tuning. This random forest is giving us a very good performance based on the evaluation metrics that we have used. Do you want to know more about this channel? Just click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.